Hey, Bolo Buddies, thanks for watching. All right, you guys, are you ready for some big money, unexpected Bolo items? What is a Bolo item? Bolo stands for be on the lookout. So these are big money items that when you're outsourcing at thrift stores and garage sales and estate sales, these are items that you want to look for, you guys. All right, so these. Hey, Bolo Buddies, thanks for watching. All right, let's get started. These um, are all auctions. And what I do is, let me pull up my screen share here and I'll show you what's happening. This is my Facebook group and Bola Buddies um, Resellers and Thrifters Unite. So this is a group where you can come and you can share your bolos, you can ask questions. It's basically anything reseller. Um, related. I do have another group that is Bolo Buddies. Um, be on the lookout, something like that. I can't remember what it is, but if you search it on Facebook, you'll find it. And that group only I share in. Um, you are, you can post in the comments and stuff like that, but um, this group anyone can share. So check out both groups. They are linked down in the description. Now, what I do is I search eBay for high selling auctions. Okay. And then I post them in the group and I invite everybody to check out those listings. Um, what's great about it is you can go into the listing, you can look at their photos, you can look for identifying marks, like if it's um, pottery or something like a mark or jewelry. So it helps you learn that way. But it's so fun to watch and see what these things sell for. But I will say that I am guilty of seeing that it's a big money bolo when I post it, that I forget to go back in and actually see what it sold for. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys what these items ended up selling for. So this is a great way to learn. Definitely go check out the Bolo Buddies Facebook group. And um, at the end, I'm gonna tell you, hopefully I'll remember, about some of the things that I do in the group that um, are group participation and you guys can have your bolos featured in videos. So we'll talk about that in the end. All right, so the first item, you guys, this is from 1924. Let me make sure my screen share is up before I get too far into this video. Okay, um, I have literally recorded a whole video and forgot to put the screen share on, and that is awful. So I've got 50 bolos coming your way, 50, you guys. So this one is a 1924 history of Freemasonry, occult, antique book, Knights Templar, Secret Society. That is their title. Did this title help sell it? I have no idea. I don't even know what some of those words mean. But anyway, um, this sold auction style on eBay for $980, you guys. So what I have been told is a lot of these books do not ever, um, they stay like within the facility. Um, so I think, are they, is it Mason's? I'm not sure. And these don't get out to the public. Yeah, the Masons. So um, these are harder to find, but check it out. What do you guys think? Can you believe it? Oh, look, 10 rare antique books starting at a dollar. Wow. So what this seller did is they put this as their last photo because people that look for items like this will um, go and uh, buy those other items. Uh, Shriner, Shriner, S-C-H-R-E-I-N-E-R. -E -E I apologize, guys. I don't know how to pronounce it, but this brooch is something special. And I have to say, if I would have seen this, I probably would have had no idea that it was something special. Now, I probably would have picked it up because right there it's signed and I pick up any, pretty much anything that is signed. Now, if I saw this right there, that's a better picture of it. If I saw this and it was $20, I probably would have looked up the brand. And, you know, $20 probably would have been really good because this sold for $1,475 plus shipping, you guys. How amazing is that? Has anybody sold that brand before? Let me know in the comments. Harley Davidson. This is a four pack of Hummer motor oil from the 50s, you guys. Advertising 10 cans. 
$3,150 for this, you guys. How cool is that? The next item that sold is this vintage 1966 to 1969 Koner Batman Push Puppet. Sold for $799. Check him out. That is really cool. 46 bids, you guys. So one thing you can do is you can click on the bid history and you can look at, well, on this one you can't, but there were 12 unique bidders. They have the identity protected on this one. So bad example. We'll do a different one. Okay. So here is, if you ever go to a sold listing and it says relisted this item, that means more than likely that the the item wasn't paid for, that somebody bid on this item and they did not pay. So this sold for $1,526, but it was relisted. So if you click on the relisted item, you will see that they relisted this item at $750 and they took a best offer. I don't know what the best offer is. This is still definitely probably a Bolo item, but I can't tell you what it sold for because it's best offer. And that's why I use um, auctions a lot is because when it's slashed through, I can't get that information. The next item that sold is this vintage Vikings Vaseline glass oil fairy lamp. And this is from, um, I don't know what I was gonna say. Let me see. It looks like it has an issue here maybe, but it does glow uh, with a black light and they should, I'm surprised there's not more photos. That's weird. Not very many photos. Um, I feel like I was over on Instagram and saw that Toledo Antique had something similar to this, but this isn't their store. Cause I was like, I wonder if it was their store. Um, but this sold for $255 plus shipping. The next item that sold is this vintage Hardy Alnwick fly reel, A-L-N-W-I-C-K. These are easy to look up because right there on the side. So you just look it up. It's an old fishing reel. You guys, this went for $585 um, and the buyer paid shipping. So let's look at the bid history. 11 unique bidders. Now, what I look for when I'm looking before I post is I make sure that it's not like two people going back and forth that are really low bidders. Sometimes that, sometimes that can tell you that it's probably not going to get paid for. Not all the time, but sometimes. So what I see here is somebody that has 6,854 feedback, that's probably a paying buyer and they went up to 505. So even if these two people don't pay, that tells me that there is demand for this item based on, and here's another high feedback, 408. So people that tend to have higher feedback, they're gonna pay because they don't wanna mess their account up. So that's one thing that I look for before I post these on um, Facebook. Vintage Trifari Alfred F Philippe. It is a uh, Tree of Life fur clip pin. What is a fur clip pin, you ask? Let me show you. This is what it looks like. Uh, crown Trifari. You can see it's got the crown on top of the T. That is how you know it is Crown Trifari. One side is open and one side is closed. I have found these before and I'm like, what on earth is this? It is a fur clip. So now you know if you see one. You can see right here that this is, um, is that, what's that say? I don't know. It's marked something. I can't really read it. But that's another good thing. Like when I was telling you, if you are in my Facebook group and you see these listings, go in because you're going to see the markings on the back. And that is how you're going to learn what to look for. This item sold for $1,625 with free shipping. Here is a vintage ponytail Barbie. And this one came from someone in the group. Um, they got it in an estate sale for $4. So if you guys are in my Facebook group and you have an auction that has bids that you think is going to be a bolo that you picked up cheap and you're selling high, feel free to private message me in the Facebook group and I will share your auction in the group. And you never know, somebody may be looking for it. So it's going to get eyes on your item and it's going to help people learn. So this one I thought was going to go for more. Actually, when I posted it in the group, some of the people that are Barbie collectors were saying they thought it would go for a hundred to 150. So sometimes, you know, auctions are not the best route. This ended up selling for $55 
and had free shipping. But the ponytail Barbies can do really well. Um, her hair is a little matted, so she would definitely need it fixed up. I don't know if there's a way to fix their hair when it's that bad or not. Um, so that could have hurt the listing. The next item are these vintage Stife miniature bears with glass eyes. Anytime you can find Stife, definitely pick it up. It is a Bolo brand. Um, these sold for $147.50 plus shipping. The next item that sold are these Oshkosh Bagosh, and this actually has not sold yet. So here's the story behind this one. I listed it in the Facebook group. The buyer did not pay. They have relisted it and it is currently sitting at $162.50. Now, I will say Oshkosh Bagosh used to be like a year or two ago trending major. Some of these things you could get two to three hundred dollars for. Um, they are not trending as much as they used to be. So um definitely do your research. You can still make money on them. What you're looking for is the vest back right here, this little um triangle, upside down triangle on the back, that brings up the value. Let's look at the bid history here. So you can see this is, again, probably going to be a non-paying buyer. You got 13, zero, 13, all zero feedback people bidding. But it's, this one has 218 at $68. So this may end up being just something that this person should put on a buy it now or best offer and, you know, price it a little bit high and hope that somebody comes along and actually pays. All right, this vintage Madame Alexander sissy doll. Um, so I'm sorry, the one before that I just showed you, that would be one that I normally would not post. But the first time I posted it, the bid history looked good. So um, just wanted to clarify that. So this is a vintage Madame Alexander sissy doll. And she sold for $166.50 on auction. Um, sleepy eye means that the eyes open and shut when you move the doll and it is jointed as seen here. And it looks like she only has her skirt and her little pants there. And are those like tights? Huh? And she's got a little crack. So yeah, always disclose things. You guys like that, how they circled that. This went for 166.50 plus shipping. The next item is vintage poly pocket. You guys, I always post the vintage poly pockets when they're in huge lots like this um, in the group. Number one, a lot of these are great reseller lots if you can get them cheap enough. This one actually went lower than I expected. The compacts that like open and close tend to go for a decent amount if you can find the vintage ones. But look at all these little characters. I mean, there are a bunch here. This ended up selling for $152 plus shipping. I don't know if a reseller bought this or not, but somebody that really knows Polly Pocket is going to be able to look at this and be like, okay, I know I can make this much money and they can decide how high they want to bid on this item for. The next item are these Vanity Fair Mushroom Gosset Granny Panties from the 60s. Now, I will tell you guys that there is definitely a market for these. But I will also say that you really have to be knowledgeable in keywords and how to list. Um, a lot of the sellers that sell these have built up a following and they will get more for their items than maybe you or me that doesn't have a following um, that list. So that is something to definitely think about. And somebody recently clarified that for me that not all of these are going to be big money. So um, do your research use good keywords, do your research on what makes them worth money and how to um, display your items. I have some videos on that if you guys want to check it out. I did some research a while back, so you can check that out. But these sold for $131.50 plus shipping. The next item that sold are these roller skates. Roller skates can be a big money bolo, but again, they are bread and butter to big money. You have to know what you're looking for. So do your research. People sometimes take, take the wheels off and we'll sell those separately. These sold for $311 plus shipping. The next item that sold are these Dixon pencils, you guys, number two pencils. They are wood and it looks like one is sharpened, sold for $541. I don't know if that's how they came just to show one sharpened or if it's really not new old stock and somebody sharpened it and stuck it back in. 
but $541 plus shipping. The next item is this vintage 1997 Mattel Godzilla Shogun Warriors Japan. Um, it sold for $326 plus shipping. All right, this one's very interesting. It is folk art and you guys, folk art can do very well. So it's handmade by an artist. And this is a mannequin carved face, hands and feet, no reserve, sold for $821, you guys. How fantastic is that? Now, um, is this something you would have picked up or walked right past? Would you have known the value of this item? And it doesn't say, um, let's see, I don't remember if, okay, right here's the artist. I mean, it's just like, Initials. I don't think it's any well-known artist or anything. Maybe it is. I don't know. The next item is this vintage Mattel ballerina. I think it's Cara or Kara. Not sure. But she sold for $352.89. She's in her original box. She's probably a harder to find Barbie. Always look up the Barbies, even if they're the pink box. Some of those are coming, coming around right now and coming up in value. All right, these three striped trucker hats. Um, this Pepsi Cola can is definitely a bolo hat. I have seen those sell before. The fact that they all have the three stripes on the side is a big money thing. So this person decided to lot these up and this ended up selling for $1,025 plus shipping. Um, I know that when I list hats like this, most of the time it's international buyers that are bidding on these. Sometimes non-payment does happen. Um, let's go in and look here. The, the winning bidder had four feedback. There were 19 unique bidders. Um, I do know that a lot of times buyers with zero and one feedback will come in and snipe these hats up. So don't freak out if um, the person only has low feedback, but it, it could be an issue. I'm trying to see if this got paid for. So one thing you can do is go in and check the feedback, but the person has to leave feedback for it to show up. And a lot of people that collect are going to resell. Um, they won't leave feedback. So it's not always a hundred percent. So no feedback on that one. Let's look at their active listings. That's another way to check and see if the item got paid for. So items for sale, it looks like this buyer lots up all of their hats. I do not see that it has been relisted. So I'm going to say that that probably got paid for because I don't know about you, but when something doesn't sell, I relist it. So hopefully it got paid for. Those are just some techniques that I use to um, try to figure out if it was a, an item that actually got paid for. This is a Masters of the Universe, M-O-T-U, that's what that stands for. It's a 1981 Scare Glow with cape action figure. It ended up selling for $290 plus shipping. Check him out. Look for him. The next item, oh, oh, okay. So, oh no, hold on. Okay, here it is. You guys, this is a vintage Quaker Oats cereal box. Free sample size box from 1965, mail in offer. So it's about the size of a pencil. So it's a vintage advertising thing, right? You guys, 69 bids. It sold for $4,683 plus shipping. Okay. So we're going into the feedback, and you can see. Look at the people bidding on this. They all have high feedback. So that's a good indicator that this is a very collectible item. All right. So I have already gone into their feedback to see if the buyer paid. Excellent seller and item as described. Cereal box, $4,683, you guys. Ah, is that crazy? I feel like that's one in my Facebook group where people would be like, that's, that's fake. That's, that's money laundering. And, you know, I think sometimes uh, some things are sketchy, but that one you could tell by all of the people bidding and their feedback that it's definitely an item that is to be on the lookout for. All right. This Liberty, uh, oh, I 
Yosemite, right? Yosemite. I think I said it. I was about to say Yosemite. Ha! Yosemite uh, jigsaw puzzle. I feel like this one came from somebody in my group. They sent me a message and asked me to share it. And they got this at the Goodwill for $1.99 and they sold it for $123.95 plus shipping. Um, it is a jigsaw puzzle. It is used. And these are the pieces. So as you can see, they are in shapes and they are wood. These are amazing and collectible. So be on the lookout. The next item that sold is this tattooing book. Um, the title to me is just awkward, um, but it didn't hurt the listing. It still sold for $1,325. Um, it looks like it's some, I don't even know what it is. Second edition tattooing world. I don't know. It's so confusing to me. Um, let's see. Is it a book or is it magazines? It says health and beauty. Now I'm really confused. Tattoo the world over. 25 of these mint came from Milton Zeus or Zeus Zeus Studio. They're books. So it looks like it's got some history behind it. I got these books from Mary, Milton Zeiss's, I think it's Zeiss, is stepdaughter. So yeah. Interesting. All right. The next item that sold is this Weber grill and it is for a boat. It's a boating grill and it is new old stock in the original packaging. So it's got the vintage advertising. This one went really high. You guys, $3,050 plus shipping. The next item that sold is this vintage Gibson box turkey call $2,800 with the leather case. So anytime I see calls, turkey calls, uh, I don't know, the crow calls, there's all kinds of different calls. I definitely look them up. And if they're cheap, I pick them up because you just never know. Not all of them are created equal. Some are bread and butter, you guys. So if you see a turkey call, don't think it's going to be a $2,000 item. As is for some restore antique French child doll. Here it is. Look at the body of this thing. Is that crazy or what? $978.36 for this, you guys, plus shipping. The next item that sold is this vintage Wilton baby bullet two inch vice. So this is little teeny tiny, you guys. Look how little it is. That's not two inches. Is that, that's bigger than two inches. That must be a typo, right? Because your hand is bigger than two inches. Maybe they're going like across. Oh, I bet they're talking about um, the part that actually holds something is probably two inches. That makes more sense. Okay. You guys, this sold for $810 plus shipping. The next item is this vintage McCarty Pottery Marigold Mississippi Fox figurine. Sold for $620 with 36 bids. Here is the writing on the bottom. This probably is not going to help you if you are out looking for something. I mean, maybe it would, but I did go in and look because I was curious at $620. I wanted to know what I was missing. The next item that sold is this upside down vintage NFL. Uh, oh, SF. What is that? Uh, 49ers, San Francisco, 49ers, chalk line satin jacket. These, um, Satin jackets can definitely be a bolo. Look them up if you see them. Uh, this one sold for $360. I believe it's a newer seller. Um, I, I don't know if they didn't know how to flip the photo or what. But I was thinking maybe this is strategy because this caught my eye immediately because it was upside down. So if you're looking through a whole bunch of 49ers jackets and you see one that's upside down, it's going to catch your eye. So what do you guys think? Strategy maybe? or just didn't know how to fix it? Let me know in the comments. The next item is this vintage salt and pepper shakers made in Japan. They are so, so cute. Look at their little faces. These sold for $179.50 plus shipping. This little cool rest. It is a uh, car console uh, cool rest. It's by Igloo. 
and you can put stuff in it and it holds your drinks and whatnot. These uh, seem to be trending right now. I've seen quite a few of these when I'm searching for auctions and solds. Uh, this was sold for $255 plus shipping. The next item is another pair of Chantilly Maiden Form. These are new with tags. Um, maiden Form is not as highly collectible, but you can still sell some of them. And this is more of a brief style. So there's particular styles. Some are more vintage than others. These are still vintage and they sold for $46.67 plus shipping. The next item is so cool. It's from the 1920s. It's an antique little like teddy. How cute is that? Sold for $81 plus shipping. The next item that sold are these Burger King Whopper Radio Shack headphones, you guys, from 1984. So this is some vintage advertising here. And these sold for $78 on auction plus shipping. The next item are these 1990 box of Willy Wonka Tart and Tiny's candy unopened sealed. And I did a whole video on candy, you guys. This, I think this is the seller. Let me see. See other items. Uh, let's go. This might not be. Hold on. This video is going to be really long. Sorry, guys. I'm getting off on little tangents here. Uh, candy. It switched to grid. Okay, list. Let's go over to solds. And it took out candy. Let's put candy in. Why? I, I don't know. For some reason, it's not. It's reverting back to that, which is really weird. Huh. Oh, it's still in there. I see it now. Highest first. I don't think this is the. Yeah. It is. Look at these prices, you guys. And I did a whole video on candy if you guys want to go check it out. But Willy Wonka, vintage Willy Wonka candy that is sealed, I guess, nostalgia. I don't know. But look at these crazy prices. Let's go into their feedback and look at this. So, again, they have tons of feedback. Let's click on candy type it in. And again, they have to leave feedback for it to show up. Um, oh, I can't filter by highest first. Here's one. Great item, great seller. These are the rinky dinks, $460. $105 for candy cigarettes. These are people that left feedback. 201, double digits. Go check out that video I did, you guys. It's amazing what pe what vintage candy sells for. Another thing that's crazy is stickers. People pay big money for these stickers. Sandy Lion is a good brand. These are not in the original packaging, but they are still on the sheet. Um, this is what it looks like on the back. Sold for $192.50. And these are fuzzy pastel cats. Cats and mice. The next item is this pipe. Um, carved horse head pipe. Some pipes do really well. Another thing that you should always look up. This sold for $228 plus shipping. Okay, you guys, 360 Vintage Company. He sells on eBay. He sells on other platforms, but he makes amazing, amazing jewelry. And um, you can see down here, if you go to his Instagram and follow him, you can see some of the stuff he makes. It's really, really cool. But uh, this sign right here, do you see it on his Instagram? He sent me this auction to share in the group. He picked this up at an estate sale for $50, you guys, and it sold for $3,052. It is 10 over cardboard. Check it out. $3,052, you guys, he sold this for. And um, I've been following Ron for a long time. Um, I met him on Facebook and he actually talked me into selling on Poshmark and Mercari. Um, so we've been friends a long time, but his store is really great and he makes beautiful jewelry. So go check him out on Instagram. Vintage Bell System Western Electricity uh, Rotary Phones. So old vintage rotary phones, especially the ones with colors, um, can do really well. Look them up if you see them. This one's from 1965. It sold for $112.50 plus shipping. The next item that sold is this Kiss Band Vintage Trash Can. Um, vintage 
Kiss band items in general can be a big money bolo. If you see Kiss band items, look them up. This one sold for $571.96 plus shipping. The next item that sold are these vintage Fisher Price Little People toys. I'm actually surprised this went for so much. Um, I think this picture looks like there's more, but when I went in and actually looked at the photos, I mean, here's all the people. They did end up parting it out. Um, you could sell these items individually. It really depends on the condition and stuff like that. So it could have been a reseller buying it or a collector, but this sold for $230 plus shipping. I typically part mine in small lots. So um, yeah, I don't know about that one. So what do you guys think? Good deal for the buyer or do you think they overpaid? The next item is this, um, it's a sharpening stone, you guys, made in Germany. It's very, very old. It sold for $560 plus shipping. So always look up sharpening stones. Here is a vintage Kugi. I always said Kugi, but I guess it's Kugi. I was corrected. Sweater from the 90s. Um, let me know in the comments if you thought it was Kugi. So yes, thought it was Kugi <laughs> in the comments. Or am I the only one? So I guess it's Kugi. I guess that makes sense. Kugi. Anyway, it's over $370 plus shipping. These sweaters have been trending for quite a while. Um, they just always sell really, really high. Uh, this one sold really high at $370. The next item that sold is this uh, vintage plastic Santa sleigh and reindeer. It sold for $212. The buyer did not pay. You can see relisted this item. So I'm going to click on that and see. It sold again for $55 and they did not pay. So if I were this seller, I would relist this item at a buy it now, but they have went ahead and relisted it at um, an auction. So again, this would not normally be something that I would share in this video, but I saw that and I wanted to use it for educational purposes. So this is listed for the third time. The next item that sold is this vintage painted original 7-Up Freddy Says Bicycle License Plate Topper. You guys, how cool is that? This one sold for $82.67 plus shipping. The next item are these vintage Levi's. Um, is it Selvage? Selvage um, Redline Hidden Conmar Zipper. So apparently that... Um, this seller did a good job of showing you all the important things of the Levi's, the big E. Um, so they've got everything right there on the front of the photo. So this would be a good way to list it. It does have a rip. They also turned the item inside out, which is really a good idea. So this, this seller did a great job. So again, when you see these listings in the Facebook group, go in and look at the photos, get educated on how these people are listing things because the high dollar stuff, they're usually being listed um, by people who know what they're doing. This one sold for $1,025 plus shipping. This guy right here is a vintage Rushton and it did not get paid for. Um, but Rushton is a big money bolo. Anytime you can find Rushton brand, definitely pick it up. Let me see. Here's your tag. The tags are usually in pretty bad shape. That is common. But condition, condition, condition. Some of these can go for crazy money if they're in excellent condition. But even in condition like this, they can still go for big money. This did not get paid for. I did pull it back up in the seller's store. It is listed at $1,500 or best offer. That's what I do. I try an auction and then I'll just go buy it now, typically. And they changed their first photo. So they updated their photos. So interesting. All right, you guys, that was 50 big money bolos. I guess we're only at 36 minutes. That's not too bad. I thought it was going to be much bigger um, or much longer. Thank you for being here. Okay, I was going to talk to you about the Facebook group. So in the group, I will post under the announcements section, featured announce, announcements slash featured. It depends on which group you're in. If it's called announcements or featured, it's really weird. But um, I will post a, it's like a, I'm trying to think of what to call it. It's like a thumbnail thing that I made. And it'll say screenshot of your best March bolo or your best plush bolo or whatever. And then you guys can go in the comments and screenshot your item. And then you tell me where you got it, what you paid for it and what it sold for. And I create a video. 
And in that video, I share the Bolo items. So what's great about that is they're actual items that sold. We know they got paid for. And they're actual resellers that are in the group sharing their items. It's super, super cool. Um, I have a whole bunch of those videos. I've probably been doing that maybe four or five months now. So there's quite a few videos. Um, some of them are broken down by the category. Some of them are broken down by the month. But if you'd like to share, definitely go do that. It is free. Now, if you have a YouTube channel or you want your eBay store shouted out in the video, you can join Bolo Buddies memberships. There is a join button. If you are at level two, um, you will get a special shout out, bonus shout out in this video in addition to um, the other membership perks. So my channel is completely free. Perks are for, or memberships are for perks. So to get those shout outs. Now, I am going to feature this little necklace. I will be listing this in my eBay store. Um, I am unboxing 344 pounds of jewelry that I picked up off of eBay to sell on eBay. And I have a whole series on my channel of me unboxing stuff, but I took a break for like a year. And I'm just now starting to get back into listing the items. This one's really, really cute. It's I think it's got some like glass beads on it, but um, I'm going to get this listed. I don't know how much I'm going to put on it, but it's got this little, um, I think it's called a toggle, toggle clasp. So really, really cute. So that will be coming soon to my eBay store. If you like jewelry unboxings, I think I'm going to put those over on my Sourcing with Bolo Buddies channel, but there's a whole bunch on this channel also. All right, you guys, links down below. List perfectly. If you want to try a cross-posting service to cross-post your items fast and easy, I use List Perfectly. I've been using it for, I think, 2019, so quite a while. Um, you can use coupon referral code Bolo Buddies to get 30% off your first month. Bolo Buddies is all one word. There is a link, a demo video down below if you want to learn about it. I start on eBay and cross post to the other platforms. You can also use their catalog, which is an awesome feature because you can delist from the catalog, which is way easier than manually finding your items, which I do, which is probably not the smartest thing, but that's how I do it. Uh, Photo Room, if you want to try Photo Room Pro, you can get your first month free with referral code BOLO, just BOLO. Um, also, if you guys are not using WorthPoint, I just, um, I, I have a video. I shouldn't say I just, I have a video that I did on WorthPoint. Um, I love it. I put it off for a long time because I felt like it was kind of pricey, but at this point in my business, it's worth every penny. If you want to see how I use WorthPoint to make more money for my business, go check out that video. There's a link down below. All right, you guys, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. There's going to be videos popping up and a subscribe button. Hit that bell if you want to get notifications when I post new videos. All right, you guys, thanks for watching.